Julius Irving was the first basketball superhero and the first player who transcended basketball and entered pop culture. He was the Michael Jordan before Michael Jordan. He made dunking popular and was the first player with signature sneakers. Here's the video about Dr. J. How good was he actually? Why he was one of the most important figures in NBA history? And where does he rank among the all-time best? Basketball Beginnings Julius Irving made his first basketball steps on the concrete playgrounds of Long Island, where he was born and raised. It was in high school where Julius got nicknamed the doctor by one of his teammates. Because he was six foot seven, with an enormous wingspan and some of the largest hands in basketball history, he got nicknamed the claw by an announcer in the famous Rucker Park in New York. They also called him the Houdini because of his spectacular moves and Black Moses because of his afro. But Irving didn't like any of these nicknames and he asked the announcer to call him Doctor. There, he became Dr. Julius, and ultimately, Dr. J, which became one of the most famous names in NBA history. After high school, Irving enrolled at the University of Massachusetts, where he spent three years. He delighted the crowds with 26 points and 20 rebounds per game and he remains one of only six players in NCAA history with a 2020 average. Julius did not come from a wealthy family and needed money, so he decided to leave college early and play basketball professionally. Because the NBA rules didn't allow teams to draft players if they were less than four years removed from graduating high school, Irving decided to join the ABA. He signed a seven-year, $500,000 contract with Virginia Squires in 1971 and immediately proved that leaving college was a good decision. The best player in the ABA. Julius averaged 27 points, 15 rebounds, and four assists in his inaugural season, and was named to the second All-ABA team and a runner-up for Rookie of the Year behind Artis Gilmore. In his second year, he led the ABA in scoring with 31.9 points per game. And for the first time, Irving realized he might be the best basketball player in the world. I didn't think I might be the most talented player in the world, but after I became a pro, after my second year in Virginia, I thought that there was a possibility that I could offer something unique, Dr. J. And he indeed offered something unique, something never before seen in professional basketball. Dr. J was highly athletic. He glided through the air and finished actions with thunderous dunks. He dunked with the right, with the left, from every possible angle and further away than everybody was accustomed to. His dunks were also a regular occurrence, and they didn't just happen sporadically, like in the 50s and the 60s. And even when Irving didn't dunk, he was a deep bag of layups, scoop shots, and other acrobatic finishes. He was slippery when driving to the basket and always had a different solution for opposing defenders. Dr. J was the most exciting basketball player in the world, but he only started getting proper media attention after he got traded to the New York Nets before his third ABA season. In 1974, his first year with the Nets, Dr. J led the ABA in scoring once again, pushing his team to the best record in the league. With 27 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists per game, Irving was also awarded the ABA MVP. He proved his dominance over the competition in the playoffs and led the Nets to the title, losing just two games in three postseason series. Next season, the Nets once again had the best record in the league. Dr. J repeated as the league MVP, but they surprisingly lost in the first round of the playoffs, despite Irving's stellar play. They would bounce back perfectly in the 1976 season, where Irving would once more lead the league in scoring and win his third consecutive MVP award. In the playoffs, Dr. J averaged 35 points, 13 rebounds, and five assists per game leading the Nets to another ABA title. 1976 was also memorable for the first dunk contest in history in which Dr. J competed against other high-flying scorers at David Thompson, George Gervin, and Artis Gilmore. Despite formidable competition, Dr. J dominantly won after dunking two balls simultaneously and a dunk from the free throw line. ABA-NBA merger and departure from the Nets after the 1976 season, Dr. J was by far the most popular ABA player and arguably the most popular basketball player on the planet. He was the first basketball player to enter popular culture and people who knew nothing about basketball could find out about Julius Irving from magazines, papers, and even comic books. The 70s were a wild era for the NBA and particularly the ABA where plenty of teams struggled to meet payroll demands and keep their franchises. The NBA also didn't like that the most popular player in the world played in the ABA, and they feared that others might follow. So the leagues did what was speculated for years at that point and made a merger. The ABA era was now over after nine years of existence. 
the Nets, San Antonio Spurs, Denver Nuggets, and Indiana Pacers were absorbed into the NBA for the 1976-77 season, while the rest of the ABA players joined other NBA teams via a draft. Before the 1977 NBA season started, the New York Knicks demanded almost $5 million from the Nets for invading their territory, and settling as the second NBA franchise in the city. Between that and the expansion fees for getting to the NBA, the Nets owner didn't have enough money to give Irving a raise that he promised him. After the salary dispute couldn't be resolved, the Nets decided to sell Dr. J to the Philadelphia 76ers for $6 million, only 24 hours before the start of the season. Philadelphia 76ers Dr. J joined a stacked 76ers team that featured all-stars George McGinnis and Doug Collins, and a young and super-talented future all-star, World Be Free. Because the team had so much firepower, Dr. J took fewer shots, and his numbers slightly decreased from his ABA days, and he averaged 22 points, 8 boards, and 4 assists per game. However, he proved that he was the number one gunslinger in basketball when the All-Star game rolled around. Irving scored 30 points, grabbed 12 boards, recorded 4 steals, and walked away with the MVP trophy. Philadelphia had the best record in the East and got to their first NBA Finals since the Wilt Chamberlain era. However, in the Finals against Portland, despite 30 points, 7 boards, and 5 assists from Dr. J, Philly couldn't get past Bill Walton, who dominated the 76ers down low, averaging 19 points, 19 rebounds, and 4 blocks for the series. In the next couple of seasons, the Sixers' management was trying to figure out how to build the team around Irving, realizing that they don't need so much scoring, but more defense. They transformed from the best offensive team in the league in 1977 and 1978 to the best defensive team in 1979 and 1980. Irving was again given the role of a primary scorer, which showed in the stats. For the 1980 campaign, he averaged 26.9 points per game, the fourth best mark in the league. The Sixers dominated the East and made another trip to the NBA Finals, where they would play against the LA Lakers, the league MVP Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and the rookie Magic Johnson, who was already the best point guard in the NBA. In Game 4 of a tight series, Irving made the legendary baseline move that would go down as one of the most memorable plays in NBA history. Dr. J drove along the right baseline and jumped in the air aiming to score a layup. When his route to the rim was blocked by Abdul-Jabbar's outstretched arms, Irving brought the ball back down and just continued to glide. He floated in the air until he reached the other side of the hoop, after which he released a soft, underhanded scoop for the score. Here I was trying to win a championship, and my mouth just dropped open. He actually did that. I thought, what should we do? Should we take the ball out, or should we ask him to do it again? Magic Johnson said. Despite Irving's brilliance, Magic would have the last laugh. The Lakers won Game 6 in Philly, with Johnson starting at center, replacing the injured Kareem, and scoring 42 points to lead the Lakers to the title. The 1980-81 season was Irving's greatest individual year in Philadelphia. After averaging 24.6 points, 8 boards, and 4.4 assists per game, he was named the league MVP. The 76ers had the best record in the league, but they blew a 3-1 lead against Larry Bird and the Celtics in their conference finals, losing the last three games by a combined 5 points. Close but no cigar theme continued in the 1982 season. It was another dominant year for the Sixers and Dr. J, where Philly avenged their loss to the Celtics in the Eastern Finals. But after they got rid of Bird, here came Magic in the Finals, and the Sixers couldn't get over the hump again despite 25 points per game from Irving. It was Dr. J's third finals loss in six years with the Sixers, and despite him proving his brilliance, he was running out of time. Irving was 32 years old, and if he was going to win an NBA title, the team needed to make a change. Moses Malone and Faux 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 Moses Malone was the NBA MVP in 1982, and by the end of that season, he became a restricted free agent. The Sixers offered him $13 million over six seasons, which was a reasonable price for the best center in the league. The Rockets' ownership was stingy and short-sighted, and they decided not to match the offer, and the news was treated as a second Christmas in the Irving household. Dr. J finally had a dominant center to battle the Celtics and the Lakers, the only missing piece during his tenure with the Sixers. With Moses, Irving, Andrew Toney, and Mo Cheeks, the Sixers finally looked like a championship team, and they steamrolled through the regular season, winning 65 games and securing home-court advantage throughout the playoffs. 
Malone was named the MVP of the league for the second consecutive time, and before the playoffs, Moses predicted that Philadelphia would go foe, 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 envisioning a four-game sweep in each of the playoffs' three rounds. He was proved wrong, but only by a hair, as the Sixers lost just one game throughout the playoffs, going 4-5-4, or 12-1 overall. In the finals, they swept the Lakers, as Malone out-rebounded Kareem 72-30 in four games. Even though he was now the second best player on the team, Dr. J had finally won an NBA championship. The Sixers would make the playoffs each time for the next four seasons, but they couldn't make another finals. Dr. J kept averaging solid numbers even at the age of 37 when he ultimately retired after the 1987 NBA season. Legacy Dr. J retired as arguably the best small forward ever at the time, and he is still in the all-time top five at his position. He made the all-star team in the playoffs in each of his 16 seasons, and he scored over 30,000 points in both the ABA and NBA. Apart from scoring, Irving was also one of the best defenders of his era, which is proven by his two steals and 1.7 blocks per game over his entire career. An outstanding number for a small forward. Four MVPs, six finals, and three titles are the highlights of his career, but he meant so much more to the NBA than that. He was the catalyst for the NBA and ABA merger, and he was the biggest superstar when the league desperately needed one, when basketball games weren't always televised, and when the future of the NBA was in financial jeopardy. Dr. J was the epitome of cool. He revolutionized the game, and every kid and aspiring player wanted to be like him, just like everyone wanted to be like Jordan in the 90s. In fact, almost everything that MJ did in the 80s and 90s Dr. J did it a decade earlier, whether it's having a signature shoe, dunking from the free throw line in a dunk contest, or making an iconic layup in the NBA Finals.